After doing a few textured wall art projects, I finally figured out how they are doing the fabric texture plaster wall art, the ones with the big ruffles. And as shocking as it sounds, it's not with fabric and it's not with clay. I tested out two ways to do it and they both work so well. So today I'm sharing them with you. So as I already mentioned, here are my ESPO photos. I wanted to achieve this look of big ruffles that are just coming out of the canvas, almost like a 3D sculpture. And I've tried using fabric and I've tried using clay. And they're just not working if you want to achieve that sculptural look. The trick is in something else and you're just about to see everything, so let's get started. Now for the first project, you're going to need a canvas. I use this square canvas, but you can use whatever dimensions or shape you want. You're also going to need plastic plaster mesh. Some also do it with wire mesh, but the plastic one is easier to work with, at least in my opinion. And we're starting off by cutting the mesh a bit larger than the size of the canvas. Now the idea is to make the ruffles using the plaster mesh, however before we do that we need to fix it to the canvas. For this I'm using a staple gun, but if you don't have one you can absolutely use hot glue or use any other type of fast adhesive. I'm attaching the mesh to the back of the canvas, going all around together with the corners, while at the same time making sure the mesh is loose enough so that I can work with it creating the ruffles later on. Once the mesh is attached, now it's time to make the ruffles. To do this, I'm simply curving the mesh using my hands and adding a bit of hot glue to keep it in place. You'll get the idea of what we're doing pretty quickly. When I was satisfied with how everything was looking, we can now proceed to mixing the plaster. Now to mix the plaster, we are adding water first. I added approximately one cup of water and now I'm adding the plaster slowly, continuously mixing. 
However, just note that I'm not mixing the plaster all the way, instead I'm keeping it as watery and as liquidy as possible. We want the plaster to be liquid since we are adding in our material so it should be, let's say, a juice consistency. And now it's time for the fabric. Instead of using a regular fabric, I decided to use a gauze. This is basically a very thin, light cloth that's used to cover cuts. I actually found this one in my first aid kit, but if you don't have one, you can find it in any pharmacy. And now I'm just dipping it in my plaster, making sure it's fully covered before adding it on top of my mesh. The idea is to cover everything with the gauze. As I'm adding it, I'm brushing more plaster to it and building it up to make sure everything's covered. Now plaster hardens super fast, so if you see it getting dense, just add in more water and keep stirring. If it's your first time working with plaster, I'd say just make sure to work in small batches and always add the water first. After patching everything and covering everything up with plaster, it's now time to leave it to dry. The first coat should be left 24 hours to dry out completely. Patience is everything here, so don't rush the process. Now it's the next day and everything's dried out. And now we're ready for coat 2. Again, we are making the plaster watery so that it's easier to apply it and we're covering everything. And after the second coat, I left it to dry for 12 hours before applying the third and final coat. Again, making sure the plaster is juice consistency, brushing it out and covering everything.
Now it's the next day and my canvas is all dried out and now it's time to send it. I went in with 280 grit sandpaper and gave it a light sand to smooth everything out. And now it's time for the final step, which is painting it. You can absolutely leave it as is. Maybe you can just add acrylic sealer and that's it. However, my walls are white and I decided to go in with this beige acrylic color. I gave it two coats so that everything was nicely covered. And now, are you ready to see how my textured wall art piece turned out? I just love how the first piece turned out and I can't wait to show you the second one with a slightly different approach and use of materials. Now first things first, for this one I decided to go with a smaller size. I found this small wooden word sign so I decided to go with it. This is just to show you that you can use different kinds of materials to achieve the same look. It doesn't have to be canvas, it can be a piece of MDF or wood. Too. And for this project, I'm using this gift wrapping fabric. I got this one from my local florist, but I will make sure to link some similar ones into the description box. And we're actually doing the same thing as we did before. I'm stapling the fabric in the back and then I'm making the ruffles in the front of the canvas. Now for the ruffles, I just continued to use the stapler since I just had it on hand and it was easier that way for me. However, you can also use hot glue or anything similar you have on hand.
Once I was satisfied with how everything was looking, I proceeded with applying the plaster. And again, the consistency should be liquidy and juicy, not thick at all. I started applying it, going into every ruffle using this brush. I think that the main reason why this matter works so well is that the fabric is meshy. Regular fabric will wrinkle and flatten out, while this one is just creating curves and waves everywhere. And once everything was covered, I left it to dry overnight for at least 24 hours. Now it's the next day and my art piece is all dried out. Let's hear from it. And now it's time to give it another coat. Again, I'm keeping the consistency liquidy working in smaller badges and covering everything. Once it was fully covered, I let it to dry for 12 hours before adding the third and final coat of plaster. The next day everything was nice and dry, so I proceeded with sanding. Nothing too crazy, I just gave it a light sand before moving on with the paint. For the paint, I again opted for a beige acrylic color and I went in with two coats. And now, are you ready to see how my textured plaster art piece turned out? I really hope you like my two projects. If you did, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button. I just wanted to note that all of the products I used will be linked into the description box. Also, if you have any questions about the projects or anything at all, just let me know in the comment section below and I'll make sure to answer as soon as possible. Also, don't forget to check out my other plaster art videos. You're going to love all of them, I promise. 
Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to never miss another video. And I'll see you designers next week. Bye.